Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, so this is another little episode of If I Were Honest, part of the 52 questions this year. Um, just kind of challenging the way we think about things and being honest with ourselves and others. And so today I have two of my friends, Sherry and Chris, joining me to, Hello. Hey, to talk about um, how we discuss our differences. So uh, if I were honest, um, sometimes it is difficult to share differences um, with others, whether that be differences about politics, religion, race, like all of those mm -hmm. kinds of things. Um, I mean, vaccinations, like I feel like in today's day and age, we can like add to the list of things that people disagree about. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not hard to find. Um, and so I asked the two of y'all to come today um, because, you know, I, I find both of you to be um, super respectful in the way that you discuss your differences about things. And I think it's just an important skill to learn because we're human beings and we're all different and we all have had different experiences. Um, and so that's going to give us a different perspective about the world. And mm -hmm. I think all of our perspectives are um, valid and we can probably all learn from each other. Um, but the question is, how do we do that in a way that is actually helpful and not more divisive? Um, so let's start with this question. If I were honest, um, <laughs> right, not, uh, right, registered. <laughs> yep, there you go. Um, it is difficult to bring up my differences in a group because fill in the blank. Mm. Um, I would say probably just, um, different lived experiences is kind of like the get go for anything. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all, um, we all have our own experiences. We all have our own, um, neurological makeup, our own sexual orientations, our different spiritual upbringings. And so I think, you know, lived experience, you know, when you are in a group where the folks you are talking to are just completely different from you in different aspects, especially if it's on a societal level, like if you grew up in an area that's predominantly Catholic or Lutheran or Baptist or whatever, and you are not in that category, it can be difficult to really make them see that perspective, you know, because they haven't experienced it. You know, experience is the greatest teacher, as cliche as it sounds. And when someone has not experienced something like that, not necessarily directly themselves, but when they're not willing to at least hear and consider the perspectives of those who have, that can be incredibly challenging. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a big part of it, experience. Mm -hmm. um, if I were honest, sharing my differences is hard. I think that's the question, right? Is that right? Yes. Yeah, um, isolation. I don't want to be alone. Hmm. And I think, and I think, um, you know, like people are like, Oh, I'm afraid of public speaking. No, you're not. You're not afraid of public speaking. You're afraid of the isolation from public speaking. And just this feeling that I am by myself is a deep, deep one. I think one of the primal fears that we have. And so when I'm sharing a difference, it's not that I'm sharing a difference. It's like, okay, <laughs> you know, you like chocolate. I like vanilla. I mean, like, and we can get that's benign, but we can get more sincere or deep or personal about the differences. But ultimately what I'm afraid of is being rejected and isolated from mm. you or from a community or from a people because I am different. And I think that's why this is so hard. Mm. At least for me. No, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I think. Like think about the kid in the playground and everyone gangs up and points at them because they're not wearing the right clothes or they're, mm -hmm. you know, they act a different way or they have, I mean, all the, it's, it's the crowd, everyone pointing. That's what we're afraid of, or at least for me, you know, and I just, mean, it's this, just difference you know, all around, right? Yeah. That I'm other. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. I mean, humans don't like what's different. You know, we're just programmed that way. Yeah. Yeah. I think cause we're meant to be in community, right? Like, as a as a people right or as a um as a species 
spe- I was going to say as a species, right? Like you can observe animals who by nature are meant to be alone, right? That's how they function. They like, they leave their families early on and they don't come back and, you know, right. That's not how we were meant to be. And so when we put ourselves in a situation, I, I mean, I think you, I think you're right on. I've not thought about that before, but like when we put ourselves in a situation where potentially we are separating ourselves from our herd. I bet you some evolutionary biologist is listening to this and nodding right now. Going, <laughs> us. Like we like herd survival instinct. Right. And when you're alone, you're vulnerable to the lion. Yeah. Right. Because acceptance for so long equaled survival. You know, it was a sharing of resources and, you know, back when the, just the environment, the climate of the natural world was much more cruel and much more inconvenient. Right. I mean, I don't know if it's so much, I think today it's more of an emotional level. Hmm. You know, I mean, we certainly need community, you know, because mental health is becoming more and more in the forefront, especially in the last decade. And, um, you know, I'm probably trailing off, but, you know, community is so much more about the emotional well-being of the person as opposed to like literal survival because i mean Mm -hmm. we're not starving you know we don't need to go out and protect ourselves from predators and whatnot but today it's more like i am so lonely i need people to talk to i need people who i can trust you know not just Mm -hmm. hang out with but people i can trust so yeah when you're different regardless of what that difference may be whatever the surroundings are, you know, that can be very intimidating and scary and it also be very taxing. Right. Yeah, totally agree. So, um, in your experience, um, what has been something that when you are approaching, um, a conversation or a group of people, or, you know, you're coming in being different or having a different perspective or opinion about something, what is something that you have found to be helpful? like that for you creates an environment of safety to be different? Um, So uh, my family and my wife and I, we moved into an urban uh, context out of the suburbs and I am a minority um, where I live. And one of the phrases early on, you know, because like, like growing up, it was like, oh, you know, if you're a leader of any type of an organization, it's because you're qualified and trained and you're telling everybody, here's the vision of where we're going to go. Come on, everybody. And if I do that in this context, I am, um, I, you know, I'm not leading anybody. Everyone's looking at, you know, just like, who, I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't identify with you or, you know, that, that that's not what um, I just I don't have that kind of social capital in this context. And so to earn that social capital, one of the phrases that we've used and I'm terrible at it most days, but we really, really try to live it out is uh, lead as a learner. So Mm -hmm. instead of leading out of a place of expertise where I have all the answers and I know all the information or I have the direction where we're going, leadership for me in this context has been, you know, comfortable with help me understand or why do, or when you said, and, and just like having that kind of, um, that anthropology, you know, logical mind of like, I'm just observing this and I'm trying to learn. And that posture, I've, I've yet to see that offend anybody. Mm. <laughs> like I've yet to see anybody, even, even when I'm in a room of, you know, of 99 people and none of them look like me. Um, I've never offended anyone when I have that humble learning curiosity about them. Mm. Uh, and that's been a different MO for sure, but it's been helpful. I think that's great. No, and it makes a lot of sense. You're not threatening. Like th- there's no need to be threatened by somebody who's curious. Right. Like everyone's favorite subject is themselves. Of course, <laughs> you know, like very early on, my, uh, my uh, very early on, my wife was volunteering at this, the kind of the anecdotal story, but my wife was volunteering at, um, kind of an after school program and these girls were letting their hair out and there was like five girls and they're all like, you know, doing the thing. And this other girl was just sitting there in the, in, you know, in the chair. And this is like right before pickup bus and they had like five minutes and, and she looks and she goes, I had at that moment, two decisions. I could just watch them or I could lead as a learner. And she was like, Hey, how, what do you, can you guys teach me how to do that? And they were like, 
oh, Miss Ashley, come here. And they like let her into the circle and they're bringing her into this really cool, mm -hmm. beautiful moment of like teaching her how to let out hair and braid hair and, and do the thing. And it was nothing about that was um, offensive. And in fact, they were eager and excited to share because there was, and I think all it requires is like a genuine curiosity to think that maybe I don't have all the answers right now, or maybe I don't know everything or maybe. And so it, it's humbling, but it's helpful. I think that's so hard to do too. Like, I don't know, like hearing you describe it, I'm like, well, duh, yeah. you know, like that makes sense. But when you're in the moment, I don't know what it is about asking a question that feels so scary. Probably back to the isolation thing again, right? Yeah. Like you're isolating yourself for a moment and saying, I don't know what you all do. Can you help me? That's really vulnerable. And sometimes it takes finding the thing you don't know, right? Sometimes we enter into things going like, I got this figured out, Good point. right? Like, I mean, yeah. if, if I were honest, I know I've entered into situations, whether even it's like a meeting, right? Situation and like, there's some problem to be solved. And I think I know the best way to do the thing. But sometimes like it takes an intentionality to go like, what do I genuinely not know in this situation? And how can I ask more about that? And in the process of that, I will probably learn more about the things that I thought I already knew. Like I might, my perspective might actually change. Uh, my answer was gonna be very similar to yours, kind of on the, the flip side of being, when I feel like um, after I've, especially after I've ex an ex I have expressed something that is in opposition to like a popular opinion in the room or something. All right. All right. When I am, when the response to that is questions, not questioning, right? Right. Not questioning my motives or my, like, what are you, what are you doing? And not that, but genuine questions of wanting to understand my defenses go completely down. And I'm like, Oh, and so do theirs. Right. So do theirs. And, they, and, and somebody can tell the difference between you're wanting to learn about my belief on immigration versus you're trying to corner me and trap me. In the right. Like we, we, we smell that real easy. We're like, oh, this person actually is interested versus they're just waiting for me to finish talking so they can make their point. Right. For sure. Yes. Sherry, thoughts? Um. I really love what Chris said about asking the questions. I guess, um, depending on the subject matter, what you're talking with the folks, like the group of folks you're talking to, like for me personally, um, you know, so I used to be Christian. Uh, I no longer am and no longer identify as Christian. Um, but, you know, sometimes when I try to speak with people who still identify as Christian about like, how I view certain things like God, religion, church practices, stuff like that. Um, you know, I have to remind myself to empathize with that position because that used to be me. I used to be that Christian. I used to hold those beliefs. You know, I used to, you know, I used to know the script, you know, for lack of a better term. So I guess when dealing with folks that you may not let me rephrase that. I'm so sorry. When you're encountering a group of people with experiences that you have never experienced, you know, um, you know, the question part, absolutely. I totally get, it. I guess the challenge for me personally is, okay, how do you approach that when you're conversing with a people group who you used to be a part of? I don't know if that makes sense. I, you know, I mean, the only thing I can like, really think to do is just, you know, ask the question like, okay, so, you know, you just keep continually progressively digging like, okay, you know, like I get it. I get why you hold that belief. So why do you hold that belief? I guess when I'm talking with people in a way, I am kind of challenging them. I'm like, okay, you right, know, like I right. get what you believe and I get for the most part why you believe it. But, you know, I really want to get down into the layers and ask them, like, okay, but why do you believe that? Why do you personally? Right. I'm not right. interested in what you think 
you know, I'm not interested in you reciting, you know, the, the Bible to me or your denomination's take on something. I want to know what you are thinking, why yeah. you think this way. What is it in your life experiences that makes you believe this? You know, and, and I think that's a difference. I mean, that might sound like two sides of the same coin, but I mean, to me, I, I think, you know, personal lived experience is important. Well, I think just because you know the answer or like you've researched this or whatever it might be, it doesn't mean you can't ask an exacting question to somebody. Maybe it's something they've never thought of, or it's the question that you ultimately looked at and it just, it was the linchpin watershed moment. Mm -hmm. Well, phrase that question for them and what would their response be? Like, I, I don't think that just because you probably know chapter verse, what someone's going to say, um, it actually makes it a richer conversation, I think. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I don't know. What do you think, Angie? Just because, I mean, like, you know, it's almost like there's, it's, it's, it's a more exacting question that I think you're going to ask. Well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think like for, for me, realizing that my job is not to convince anybody else how they should feel about a thing. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have ownership over that. I don't have ownership over their experiences. I don't have ownership over their perspective on their experiences. I don't have ownership over that. And so if I enter into a conversation going like, all I can own in this conversation is my personal experience. Mm -hmm. What, you know, I feel like the conversation is more um, fruitful in the terms of like mutual respect right. when I can, when I'm not trying to convince somebody of something. Right. But I can go, all I can speak to is what this means to me or my experience with this or whatever that helps me to respect and hear their personal experience exactly for that, you know, and, and to just go, um, I may not need to, may not need to, uh, sometimes push any further mm -hmm. sometimes. Right. Because I can go, okay. Like, cool. Like yeah. I can still, I can still sit here at the table and talk with you and crack a joke. And we're going to be laughing in two minutes. And you, the person sitting across from me isn't threatened because they think I'm trying to convince them of something. Mm -hmm. Neither am I feeling like I am losing out on something or do, not doing my job or, you know, like I'm not bearing the weight of I'm here to change the world through this one conversation. Okay, let's be realistic. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> I'm not that powerful. I'm not that important. And sometimes I think that's important to remember. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I like so, writers, man. I like when people come with like hard questions. I do. I yeah. think those are the best conversations. I And maybe it's, maybe I'm assuming like a, a certain amount of affinity with a person or something. Mm -hmm. like, oh, they're, they're comfortable enough to ask this. And it, as long as it's not an aggressive way, like, you know, right. Here's what you haven't thought of, you know, like, like a genuine quick curiosity, I think is, it's always helpful, man. I love that kind of a conversation. Mm -hmm. I think having the relationship, oh. that affinity is super important. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. Which is why, you know, sometimes face, we've all seen Facebook conversations go, <laughs> right. It's because like all of a sudden you have people who, who are, commenting or responding who don't know they're responding to somebody else's comment like they're complete strangers uh -huh. right yeah, complete strangers. and it's like hold on like get back to sherry what you said like y'all don't know each other's personal experiences so how can you debate on this thing there's no there's you know yeah. it's all theoretical at that point yeah. and it has nothing to actually do with the people involved you know does that make sense so in light of that, because we're running out of time, um, what is not helpful for you in particular when discussing differences? Like what are the things that just make your walls go up or um, or maybe you've you've done something and you realize, oh, I, th I just did something that made that other person's walls go up. Like whatever I did totally offended them. Yeah. Uh, big one for me is like, 
talking as if the other person just didn't say that thing and just like i have a point i'm gonna say it and had nothing to, uh, uh, we, have, we have racial reconciliation circles that we do and restorative justice circles like actually the public school district uses our space for restorative justice circles and it's awesome and one of the principles that they have is verify the opinion you hear before you voice the opinion you hold mm. Verify the opinion you hear before you voice the opinion you hold so like when somebody says something you have to first go in a restorative justice circle go what i hear you saying is bah, 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 bah. is that correct and then you know and then what happens is you're not like shooting down a straw man you're not you know, arguing about a red herring, it, it, you're, you're actually, this is what the person said. Okay. And then you speak now, what did you hear me say? You know? And so it's a beautiful, and I would do it all the time in our family. I have my kids do it to each other. Cause I think it's super, super powerful. You can't just like, you know, I was going to say, I think every marriage would be so much better off if we just did that. <laughs> Angie, what I hear you saying is <laughs> Paul, needs to listen to this podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, no, that's really good. That's really good. Anyway, that's just, uh, so it's kind of a positive way of answering your, when have I? No, like I, or... positive's good. Sherry, how about you? Um, I think... Well, one, I think both or whoever parties are involved in the situation need to be willing, first of all. And I think sometimes people, I mean, let's face it, and, and we've all been guilty of this, I think, but sometimes we're in a conversation, you know, just to give our side and that's it. Mm. And, you know, I mean, we've all done it. I've done it. I'm sure y'all have done it. Um, but first of all, there needs to be a willingness. There needs to be a willingness for all the parties involved. Now, if you are in a situation where you are sharing such things and you're just getting those signals and you'll know, you're getting those signals, you're getting that vibe from that person, the body language, or maybe certain things that they're saying where you're like, okay, I'm not getting through to this person. No, I said, I'm not getting through to them. I didn't say that I'm not swaying them to my opinion or something. I'm saying, you know- I'm not being heard. There's no reciprocation here. There's no reciprocation of understanding. There's no, curiosity as chris mentioned to learn about the other person so that's just when you got to put up a boundary and say you know what it seems like you're not ready for this conversation and that's not an insulting way but it's like you know some people the only way they're able to have certain conversations if they're ready you know and you know you got to make sure like okay let's establish some things here do we trust each other to ask the hard questions do we trust each other to give honest answers do we trust each other to listen with the goal of understanding each other, understanding different perspectives. You don't necessarily have to agree, but you have to understand. And honestly, I think understanding can bring change. I'm not saying that has to be your motive, but you, you know, you just, I'm trying to figure out, I'm not very good at articulating ideas. Um, You're doing great. You, you, you just have to, um, sometimes you just have to preserve your energy and, you know, I know that sounds like a cop out. I know where people always say like, oh, don't give up on people and stuff. I'm like, it's not about giving up on people. It's about saving your energy and having things actually have progression. Healthy boundaries. In your breath. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, mentioning about asking questions, you know, as Chris mentioned, you know, he goes in there trying to learn. You know, I, I would say a red flag in that situation is if only one person is the one who's asking all the questions. Is everybody asking questions? Is everybody engaging in this conversation? Or is there just one person spewing out opinions and theories and all this stuff? Yeah. That's good. So it has to be reciprocal. It has to be mutual. It has to be agreed upon. Yeah, like if I get two or three questions in and the person never turns around and goes, so what do you think? Right. Mm -hmm. Conversation over. Because like they don't care what I think. And even if I just say it, it's not going to be heard. And so it's like, mm -hmm. hey, all right, moving on. Glad I listened right. to you for a while. Mm -hmm. For sure. I think for me, and like in almost every um, situation where I have been in like um, some kind of, a, like even with my kids, right? 
when there's some kind of difference of opinion, I'm I'm like, okay, what just happened? Like you totally ignored me and you disobeyed and their perspective is, well, you, whatever it is, right? (laughs) So even from, from a situation like that between parent and child all the way to like bigger conversations, um, like for me in the trafficking world, okay, uh, when for it super unhelpful for me is when generalizations are made, whether it be with my, my kids or my spouse, well, you always do this. You always say that, or, um, you know, if a generalization is to be made about extreme, extreme language. Yeah. Women, right. Well, women as a whole, you know, group of people of a whole people group now now i'm being thrown into you know a a group that maybe i don't agree i I don't know how this other person is defining um that people group what what attributes and characteristics and belief system and like all the things they are putting on that's a that's like you know you could write a book like i could write a book on what i think millennials think about all kinds of things from politics to favorite dessert to social media, like all those things, right? I I could tell you what I think they think, but in a conversation, if, if somebody throws me into like, well, you're a, I don't even know what I am. What, what I'm not a millennial and I'm not a Gen X. You're a Gen Gen Xer. You're a Gen X. Okay. There you go. So, (laughs) If somebody throws me into that group, right, and assuming that that I hold all the beliefs of, like, I don't know what they think that is, right? Right. For me, I'd immediately, my walls go up. And I'm like, whoa, I'm an individual with Mm -hmm. individual opinions and beliefs. And and I I don't find it helpful when when those kinds of um, generalizations are used. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, too, if it's like um, a with if the person that I am having a discussion with. uh, So let's bring up like trafficking. Okay, if I'm having a discussion with them and um, in general, they are especially with like somebody who's not in that group. So let's say I'm talking to a man and he is telling me how women feel and think and what their experiences are. Uh I'm like, okay, one. Like, tell me more. (laughs) You know, I I don't know that you know, you know. And uh, two, if you you are offended or worried about how women as a whole think or feel or act, if I, as a woman, can help change that, if you keep referring to us as women who only have this perspective, I can't do it. Like you're making it impossible for me to be an advocate to help change the world on a bigger level because you've already predetermined how I feel and think about it. Like it, I, I find it putting a big roadblock up to actual like, changing big societal generalizations because if we keep speaking in those generalizations we're not giving anybody a chance to help change that right. you know and i and i think especially when we're passionate about things we like to speak in those i do it all the time we like to speak in those generalizations mm-hmm. and basically point the finger at this it's easier to point the finger at a big umbrella of people mm-hmm. and point out the fault Mm-hmm. But sometimes there are a lot of people under that umbrella that are trying to change the thing, yeah. but they can't because they're constantly lumped under the umbrella, you know? So I know for me, that's just a, it's just a pet peeve. And I know I've done it and I've received the response of when I've done it, you know, and I kind of been put in my place and it, it stuck with me. I'm like, Ooh, okay. I need to stop. I need to stop referring, you know, to, people in groups, right? And just get to know people Mm one-on-one, which seems to kind of be the theme of everything we've said. Yeah. (laughs) Right? Like, 
Yep. It's all about people and getting to know people and their individual experiences and respecting them and learning from them. Um, seems it's just basic human dignity is what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're out of time. Um, but this has been really fun and um, enlightening. So thank you guys. And um, yeah, I that. love y'all. And um, I love y'all for your differences. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, honest, I had a good time too. Yay. Good. Um, well, thank y'all again. And um, thanks everybody who's listening and listen to the whole thing all to the very end. You're awesome for sticking with us. So, yeah.